What's going on there folks? Good morning. It is the Earth Master here on this uh, beautiful Tuesday morning, April, well it's afternoon now, April 5th, 2022, about 12.05 p.m. California time. Latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe shows some activity out around the Indonesia area. Seen a little swarm of movement kick up here in the 3 and 4 range uh, this morning. Let's go ahead and check out the activity here. Latest map on the USGS. Uh, bring that up here real quick. There we go. Stream did go down this morning, by the way. Uh, we do have some pretty strong north winds out here in California today, so could be... Uh, I don't know. I wasn't awake at two, three in the morning when the when the uh, stream went down, so I can't say exactly what happened. But uh, it's back up and running now. But again, we do have some strong winds. Sometimes uh, these winds out here create a lot of static in the lines and in the air. It's a very dry north wind uh, in California today. All right, what do we got going on out here? We're going to start out here in Northern California, uh, where we're still seeing some activity ramp up here at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Of course, uh, if you remember, we had some uh, earthquake activity here yesterday, right? Uh, it's going to be the, uh, actually, it looks like uh, the three-pointer has dropped off the map. But since then, since the uh, 3.9 hit yesterday, we've seen a little increase in movement up here along the northern California coastline. And right around the uh, 20, even a 27-kilometer depth, uh, 2.6, the latest here in this region of the Cascadia, southern end of the Cascadia once again. I did a little bit more extensive video on the Cascadia last night on my update, so kind of explained a little bit how the earthquakes uh, uh, and the tremor activity uh, go hand in hand in this area. If you didn't get a chance to check it out, go check it out here on the channel. I'm not going to go over too much of it again today, but we are seeing a lot of activity ramp up here in the southern end of the Cascadia. That's the activity south of the Eureka region. Uh, some movement over here around Chester as well. This is south of Mount Lassen. Lassen Peak sits up here about 5-10 miles or so to the northwest. Uh, Chester does see some earthquake activity around the region. Lake Almanor as well uh, over the past seven days. Not a whole lot of movement here, but I know within the past month or so we have seen a little bit of activity around the Lake Almanor area and even one little quake up around the Mount Lassen uh, region. So no major swarms to report around Lassen, just uh, a little bit of activity here. Outside of Chester, about 7.2 uh, kilometers below the surface here in miles. That's going to be uh, about 4.5 miles there on the map. Uh, looking at the rest of the Pacific Northwest, one earthquake up here around the Goose Lake area in the Northern California. Uh, New Pine Creek, Oregon, looks like the uh, Oregon side, a point 0.1 at 1.9 miles. Uh, below the surface for that earthquake. Uh, volcanoes look pretty cal um, calm for now throughout the Oregon region. At least the seismographs uh, maps are uh, showing. I'll show you guys that here in just a minute. Uh, but a little bit of activity south of Mount Rainier and some movement around the... Well, there's a quarry blast over here near Yakima. 1.7 explosion. And a little bit of activity up here around the Seattle area. Of course, this area has seen quite a bit of trimmer activity over the last seven days or so since about the 21st and that activity is still continuing as of yesterday with 403 epicenters mainly into the vancouver island ranges up here uh, just outside of seattle so uh, it's been quite the active week in trimmer we'll see what that looks like tonight but uh, earthquake activity kind of continuing there on the deeper side uh, into the region of the washington and the vancouver island ranges area uh, across the uh, Intermountain West regions, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. Not a whole lot showing up here on the map. Let's go ahead and check out the overview of Yellowstone and see what we got here. This kind of looks like... Uh, hold on a second here. Oh, okay, I see what's going on. I was wondering why this looked the same. I was doing an update uh, well, last night and yesterday morning as well. I tried to get two of them out. And uh, last night's Yellowstone map looked very similar to uh, the update I did yesterday morning. So it doesn't look like they're updating their seismograph stations here. See, this is from the 3rd and the 4th still. We're into the 5th. UTC time is actually into uh, very close to being into the April 6th time frame. So we're missing some data here from the past couple days of uh, Yellowstone activity. And it looks like it's about all of them. 
So not for sure what's going on with the uh, this specific website. Uh, there is a couple other stations here or uh, websites that you can use to check out the Yellowstone seismic activity. Uh, the University of Utah, quake.utah.edu education website here uh, will allow you to access the live seismograph stations uh, and unless these are all down as well. So I'm going to check this out here real quick and see what we got on the map. Here's a Yellowstone overview. Uh, and you can also check out, uh, I think any one of these should be up and running. We'll check the Holmes Hill seismograph. No, and they're still down. So it's not the overview of Yellowstone graphs. It's actually just the, uh, the seismograph stations themselves. You notice that? It's been kind of a trend lately with lack of reporting and missing data recently here with the USGS and the PSN or PNSN network. It's just, it's, this is like the third or fourth incident with something, you know, as far as like not reporting things. So we'll get to it, right? They will, hopefully. <clears throat> so we'll skip past the Yellowstone activity for a while. I do have a live Yellowstone seismograph on there. So you can see that station right there on the map. There's a couple different ones here, but Yellowstone's going to be right here. Grant Village uh, Yellowstone Station. So at least we got the live data coming in. All right, uh, moving onward into the earthquake activity. Looking at some activity through the Utah region. No major swarms to report throughout the region there. Uh, of course, over here in Clear Lake, still some activity with the Calpine um, production of energy and induced earthquakes there from the uh, from the whole process. Uh, that they use. Uh, Bay Area seeing a little bit of movement south of the San Francisco Bay Area just off the San Andreas. San Andreas, right? Uh, some, sometimes I get in there and I, I, I say the word San Andreas really quick. And uh, somebody corrected me saying uh, it's San Andreas, not San Andreas. But trust me, I'm throwing an N in there. San Andreas. <clears throat> sometimes it just comes out really quickly. Anyway, okay. Uh, yeah, a little swarm of movement off the San Andreas fault zone and the uh, Calaveras fault zone as well. Quite a few microquakes in that region today and up around the Long Valley Super Volcano. Still seeing some movement around, looks like uh, just south of the area. This area has seen quite a bit of movement over the last seven days or so, including a swarm around the Round Valley area. That has since died off, but uh, still looking uh, somewhat active in the region of the uh, eastern part of the Sierra Nevada and the Ridgecrest area still seeing uh, some movement down there as well no major reports of any swarming any unusual activity at all to report in Southern Cal today latest 1.2 there just off the southern section of the San Andreas Fault San Andreas <coughs> Arizona New Mexico pretty clear bunch of severe weather over here in the south today you guys got to be alert uh, throughout Georgia Alabama area Quite the tornado potential in that region of the world today. Um, Oklahoma City out around the El Reno area still seeing some movement. New Madrid zone looks a little quiet today. Not a whole lot going on there. In fact, over the last seven days, uh, only two earthquakes within the area of the New Madrid zone here. Uh, looks like a couple small ones in that region. Uh, looking on through the Mexico area had a 4.5, 2.6 right around the Mexico City area, just outside of there it looks like. 4.5 in that region. Middle America Trench pretty quiet here on the USGS map. And a little bit of activity off the coast here of Ecuador. 4.4 at 6.2 miles. South America region seeing some uh, deeper activity into the Peru Chile Trench today with a uh, 4.5. Well inland, but also well down dip into the Peru Chile Trench subduction zone. And some further deep activity around the region there in Peru and Chile. Uh, Puerto Rico last night was kicking up here. I was watching this activity as I was heading to bed. We've seen a little bit of movement up here around the Puerto Rico Trench. One right smack dab on it, 3.8. And some further activity further uh, a little bit south here. Uh, this one's pretty deep as well, 31.7 kilometers for that 3.4. And some movement over here around St. John's area so a little bit of uptick here outside uh, at least the eastern part of the Caribbean region 
Uh, let's see what we got. Atlantic Ocean looks pretty quiet. North and south looks pretty clear. Nothing uh, on the south part. Over here in the Indian Ocean. 4.9 here in the southeast Indian Ridge. Throughout the uh, western part of the Pacific Plate, things starting to die down pretty quickly here. Look at this. Uh, not a whole lot to report. Yes, there is activity kicking up here. Uh, but the majority of this was from last night uh, and yesterday. Uh, 5.9 in the Indonesia area. 0144 from yesterday. Not a whole lot new new activity to report here. Fiji Islands as well, same thing. This activity from late last night. So these, this area here, very, very calm in terms of uh, recent activity. So got to watch that. Lohi Seamount, some movement out here just outside of the uh, submarine volcano. And uh, southeast region of the Big Island still showing some movement today. Up here around Mono Loa as well. No major swarms to report. This is very typical here of earthquake activity in that region. But as far as any volcanic movement goes, things just kind of uh, as they are, continuing as they are. So we'll watch this area pretty closely. I'm thinking here with the increase in the Caribbean plate movement last night and this morning and the renewed deep activity here in the South America region. We've got to watch this area, Central America area. Uh, in South America region as well uh, for some possible movement. Uh, okay, let's see. We checked out Yellowstone. We checked out the Trimmer map. We'll check the uh, check those a little bit later tonight and see if things get updated. Earthquakes Canada map here showing. Uh, well, this thing's lighting up a little bit today. I guess it's kind of good to see. This area is showing, or at least this map here is showing the movement in Washington. Uh, that we showed earlier and also some activity here at the northern end of the Cascadia uh, plate boundary which runs right here down south into uh, the states and into northern California or just offshore northern California. See a little bit of movement including the most recent quake here 2.2 at uh, 27 kilometers there so deep movement into the subduction zone not only down into the southern end where we're seeing the activity by Eureka but also up there in the northern end uh, so just got to watch that pretty closely, folks. Like I mentioned on the update, we are getting into that window of when, you know. It's uh, definitely, in, in some aspects, it's somewhat overdue. If you look at intervals over the last 10,000 years there along the Cascadia, uh, 246 years since the, uh, well, no, 246 years is the uh, intervals, uh, average anyway, for the uh, Cascadia Megathrust earthquake. And last one was 1700. So 322 years and counting. Each day, each hour, each large-scale tremor event inches us that closer to the uh, big one out there along the Pacific Northwest. I don't know. I've always, I've always thought I'd see that thing go in my lifetime, and I, I don't know. I still kind of have a, I have that uh, feeling that I may see that occur. I've had dreams about it. It's just always in the back of my head. You know, we're all alive for a specific reason and a season in our lifetimes. And I think that's kind of my season there uh, to witness that Cascadia go. I don't want to see it go because it's going to be uh, definitely going to be devastating in terms of uh, damage. But yeah, I'm starting to uh, starting to feel a little bit better. I don't know what it is, folks. It's just weird. It's really weird. I think it has leftover stuff to do with me catching the... Uh, uh, catching that virus a, a couple months ago here. I just I just go through these weird phases of uh, just all of a sudden my nose was just start running out of the blue. You know, just like clear liquid. And it's just weird. I've never had this happen before. So I think it's some type of leftover uh, event. Leftover, uh, oh, what's the word? Residual illness from uh, the prior main fires all right uh let's see what do we got solar weather activity still looking at a g1 class storm here on the april 6 april 7 time frame 65 percent chance across the board for higher latitudes um we'll see if that is going to uh be a direct impact or not it's from a cme and filament that kicked off here uh, a couple days ago so, <clears throat> sunspot activity Kind of diminishing, uh, still calling for a 75% chance of a sea flare. There's not a whole lot of intermixing here of unstable magnetic fields across the sunspots here, folks. They look somewhat stable. 
the active region, of course, that gave us all that excitement last week is now way around the bend. And uh, I just, I'm not seeing anything specific that could, you know, provide us with any type of major flaring. So even, even looking at the C flare potential, it's declining. If you look at the solar flare detection and the charts that is provided here, we're seeing a, a large drop off of, you know, just background flaring and it's well below the C threshold. So I don't even see us having any type of C event anytime soon, but uh, we will be watching it, no doubt. All right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe out there. Live stream is up and running. Having some intermittent uh, data loss issues with the live data over here on the seismographs, but uh, hopefully that uh, will stay up there because it's kind of neat watching the live data. Someone mentioned about uh, having trouble seeing some of the... Uh, the seismograph location names and yeah, it's a little it's a little small on the window I'm gonna see though if I can't bring this up a little bit more larger without completely messing everything up see if I do though it's gonna I guess maybe we can have it somewhere around there possibly I don't want to cut off the uh, the amplitudes over here but yeah I get it it's kind of hard to see the uh, station names I don't even know if that provides much of a uh, of a relief yeah I guess if it was that big yeah maybe we could probably see it now right <laughs> but uh, at the same time I kind of want to keep the space weather events on here and not interfere too much with the globe it's just yeah it's a little hard to see I don't know if you guys can uh, you know maybe zoom in on your on your phone, device, TV, computer. Um, I have no problem seeing it here on this end, even even with it being normal size about right there. So like I said, I just don't want to block everything here on the view. So, uh, But just running real quick, just for those that really can't see all that well on the, um, on the charts and bring up the hand. Uh, this station right here is in Solomon Islands. Solomon Islands Beach, Z Station. Uh, this here is a live Yellowstone station there in the Grant Village area. Monitoring live data in Yellowstone. And the uh, Hawaii station there on the Big Island. Kind of watching uh, earthquake activity there as well. And down here is a Japan station. It's one of my favorite stations to watch here in terms of uh, the western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Uh, BC station up there north of us, north of Washington. And uh, a Barrett station, that's in Southern California, just to the east, northeast of uh, San Diego area. So hopefully that helps out a little bit. And I think in the future we're going to probably maybe switch up this live data a little bit, uh, make it a little bit more uh, easily to, uh, to read, and maybe not have the scroll effect, you know. Uh, but I use the scroll effect to include more uh, stations here onto the onto the live stream if I don't have a scroll effect on the data stations itself we're probably only able to view three stations at once and uh, if I had it my way we'd be looking at probably 10 or more data stations that we could watch but uh, kind of just got to use the scrolling effect to include some of these stations that we that we uh, tend to monitor here on the live stream so all right folks I'm off here have a good day we will chat you guys later this evening peace out